Now we're going to talk more about the instruction set architectures. So this is the second half of these, and we're going to go into some details about how they work. So we're going to start out with talking about how you translate to machine code. So we talked a lot about instructions in the form of add and subtract, and now we're going to talk about how do we actually convert these to binary numbers that the machine can use to use for instructions. And this includes a bunch of things. So it's going to include what instruction formats. How do we represent the instructions? How do we put in immediate values? So remember we had add instructions that could have numbers in them, like add i. How do those get in stored? How do we encode branches? And then how do we put in larger constants that don't fit in those immediate instructions? So we're going to talk about how we actually take the instructions and translate them to machine code here. We're then going to talk about a really important topic, which is procedure calls. So a procedure call is when you go off and you jump to another part of code, do some work, and come back to where you were. And what we need to be careful of here is that we don't overwrite each other's registers. So you need to have conventions for how we share registers and how we save registers when we need to use them in different places. Finally, we're going to talk a little about other ISAs. So in this class, we're focusing on the MIPS ISA, and we spent a lot of time talking about that. But we'll give you an introduction to other ISAs and the other design decisions they made in them. So let's review where we were from last time. So we talked about instructions, and there were three basic types. We had data operations, such as add and subtract, data transfer for loading and storing between memory and the register file, and sequencing. And sequencing was for doing branches, so unconditional jumps and jumps, which are oh, sorry, unconditional and conditional. And we talked about a bunch of these. So here's the add instruction, r1, r2, r3, and it's going to take register 2 and 3, add them together, and store them in register 1. We also talked about add i, this immediate version of it, which takes two registers and this immediate or constant value, and it adds that value in. We talked about load and store operations, talked about branch operations. And today we're going to go through all of these in detail, and we're going to talk about two different types of jumps as well, jump register and jump and link. So before we go into the details, let's review how the processor is going to execute. So we have our memory, which is large and slow. And we have a register file, which is much smaller. So remember, we only have 32 registers. Memory, we have up to 4 billion locations. We have our ALU, or arithmetic logic unit. This is where we do the computations, the additions and operations. And we're going to have a program counter. And the program counter holds the address for the memory. So it tells us which instruction in memory we're looking at. We take that instruction and we fetch it into the instruction register. The instruction is then sitting here, and we have control logic that goes in and decodes this. And the control logic is going to tell the rest of the processor what to do. So it tells the ALU what operation to do, it tells the register file which registers to read. The ALU then executes the operation and gets its data from the register file and writes its results back to the register file. The control also takes the results of this and tells us what instruction to go to next. So if it's a branch instruction, do we take the branch, or do we just go on to the next address in memory? In addition to this, we also have memory address registers and data registers, which allow us to control which address in memory we access and what data we either read or write from it. So this is the picture you should have of the processor, and what we're going to do in this lecture is we're going to talk about how we actually build these instructions such that the control logic can decode them and figure out what to do.